Howdy folks, my name is Epping Controller, and today we're going to be playing Realms, z -z 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 spelled with a Z, to make it edgy and hip. Um, Realms is a fantasy role-playing game um, made in the mid-late 90s by Tim Phillips. Very handy to have all of that right on the screen in front of me. Um, so I guess, you know, that's what Realms is, very broadly speaking, but I would like to ask the deeper question of why realms? Well, to answer that kind of weirdly stated question, um, let's let's do the time warp. Let's uh, let's travel back in time to the mid late '90s. Let's put on some uh, flannel and a uh, chain wallet and go back to that wonderful time in gaming when, for the PC, we were having all kinds of wonderful titles coming out. Um, Betrayal at Crondor is a fantastic example. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Elder Scrolls games coming out. There's Might and Magic. There's some of the Ultima games, Baldur's Gate. You know, it's just... And that's just the RPGs. Of course, there's tons of other really excellent games. Um, Fallout, Diablo. I mean, I could just keep going on and on. Um, but meanwhile, on the Macintosh, um, picture a uh, an abandoned Old West ghost town with <laughs> tumbleweeds... Uh, rolling down the main drag in an abandoned saloon. It, it, it's not a pretty picture. Um, when, well, if we even got those titles uh, on the Mac, it was oftentimes like two or three years later. It was kind of an embarrassing state of affairs. Um, I know that some of those games I rattled off didn't even make it to Mac. Betrayal at Crondor is a good example. Um, and so in order, I guess, to keep us Mac users from going uh, crazy with Envy... Uh, folks like Tim Phillips made Mac original RPGs like Realms. Now, uh, Realms did eventually end up on the PC, but it's it's got just a very Mac-y feel about it. And I think that that's um, true of a lot of the Mac RPGs, mostly because, as opposed to the PC games, which had probably pretty large development teams, these Mac games were pretty much labors of love made by one, two, or maybe even three people. Um, I know that Realms was predominantly made by Tim Phillips, although a lot of the scenarios um, were made by other people. We'll get to the issue of scenarios later, but um, as a result, games like Realms have this very individualistic and kind of unpolished feel to them. Um, there's some features in there that are kind of questionable. I mean, I love it, but you'll see what I mean as we go through it. There's just like a kind of a little, little bit of rough edges here and there. Uh, which I actually like. It, it shows just a more, in, uh, maybe even a more cohesive game in some respects. I'm probably getting into uh, some territory where I'm not really qualified to be talking about it. Um, but, you know, I just, I, I feel like there's a very homey sense about games like Realms, and I love it to death for it. Um, other examples of games in this genre from the Mac, um, leaping to mind, of course, is the Exile series, um, which you might have some idea about because. The studio that made Exile, uh, Spiderweb Studios, released Abaddon recently, which has been kind of a sleeper hit on Steam. So if you're kind of familiar with that, you will actually have a decent idea of what we're getting into in Realms, although it is different for sure. Then there's another game that comes to mind called Taskmaker, um, a little bit older, I think, than Realms, but still has that kind of down-home cooking kind of feel, I guess. I don't mean to belittle the games in any way. It just reminds me of something that's... Uh, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one rather than one-on however many people uh, made those other games. So, um, again, probably talking out of turn here. Just just my thoughts. Do with them what you will. Uh, what I will do right now is I will go ahead and start a game. Now, Realms is unique in a lot of ways. I think foremost among them, though, is that it's really not a game unto itself. It's, it's more of a a system like Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, Dungeons and Dragons doesn't have anything without its campaigns. Um, so Realms is really an engine for driving the scenarios that uh, either come with it or that are purchased separately. You can actually see, if we go to the adventure menu here, that there's a list of different scenarios and there's a lot of them. So that's one cool thing. Oh wow, there's a ton of them. I didn't know that there were that many. I thought it just ended here. Um, so that's one really cool thing, is that Realms came with a fairly powerful scenario editor called Divinity that allowed you to, you know, create your own maps and scripting and art assets and things like that. It's a pretty pretty neat little tool, and it lets the game basically go on forever if you um, are so inclined. Um, 
And then, of course, there's the character generation system. I won't generate a character. I've already got a party put together. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this first adventure, City of Bywater. It was the one that came with the game. I think it was free um, as a shareware kind of thing. These other ones are actually activated. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. This, just the version that I got my hands on has all these activated. I'm not out of respect. I'm not going to be playing these, I'll just be sticking with City of Bywater, also because it's going to take me forever, obviously, to work my way through all of these. So, uh, let's go ahead and begin a new adventure. And the party that I have put together uh, is composed of YouTubers and YouTube friends that I respect and admire. So, without further ado, here we go. Oh, and I forgot to turn on the sound. Well, that was because there was a volcano erupting in the background, it was going to make a lot of noise. I can't turn it on now. Oh well, I'll turn it on in a minute. So first and foremost among uh, YouTubers I respect and admire is of course myself, Effington the Dwarven Crusader. And then we have Flailfist, the Red Guard Monk. And the less said about that, the better. Uh, Variax, the uh, Dark Elf Enchanter who has enchanted the hearts and minds of viewers around the globe. I don't know. Uh, Influx, the Rogue, the Leprechaun Rogue. <laughs> And I, I just couldn't pass up that uh, portrait there. Uh, and then we have Tailmange, the gnomish cardinal with a fancy feathery hat. And then finally, Slugger, the derpiest looking orcish berserker ever. He just wants to be your pal. Um, so we have a full party here. You have a limit of six characters. This particular scenario recommends a total level count of six. So each of these guys is level one. If, uh, let's say, Effington was level three, this would bump it up to current levels of eight. That would diminish the experience we got a little bit. Uh, you can also tweak the difficulty if we adjust it to hard. It, uh, it makes it a little bit uh, more difficult, but we get higher experience. And then this changes the monster abilities, I think. I can't remember for sure. It's been a while. But uh, I think we're just going to stick with normal. Now, I got to warn you guys, the music in this game is awesome. It's also kind of out of place a little bit, but uh, if I get tired of it, I'll turn it off. If, of course, you guys get tired of it, I don't care. So let's go ahead and get going here. Alright, so we're in the overworld map of uh, City of Bywater. I'm also going to turn on the sound. One thing, I guess what I'm kind of talking about with the game being a little bit quirky, these menus are kind of silly. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's got this gigantic demon icon for the About Realms area. I mean, that's, you know, whatever. Uh, let's turn the sound up to two. Kabam! Alright, let's get going. Welcome to the City of Bywater, a scenario for use with the Realm Scenario Driver. If you enjoy playing Realms and would like to see more scenarios developed, please support us by setting in your registration fee. So this is all basically not information about this particular scenario. This is more about Realms as a, as a thing. Um... It does say here, though, this scenario is very loose. It does not have a strong plot line. You can adventure where you want for as long as you want. <laughs> and then this is more registration information. Kind of an overview of the scenario system that is used in Realms. Fun stuff. Let's get going. Alright. I would like to go inside of here. You have come to the town brothel. Well, we're off to a great start. Perfume fills the air and covers any original odor that may have come from this former boarding house. A sign outside the building gives prices for various races and sexes. <laughs> it appears to be well managed and doing a lot of business. There's a steady stream of customers going in the front door and coming out the back. Um, well, what if some of the customers want to go through the back door? Thank you, game, for setting that one up. Alright, so we're in kind of a dungeon encounter thing here. Um... Can wander around a little bit. There's really not much to see, I don't think. Um, one thing I want to do before I forget, as I recall, Lethal will have. Oh no, he doesn't have his nunchucks equipped. Well, that's perfect. Do we have. Oh, they have all my armor from when I was kind of giving this a test run. That's funny. Okay. That's okay. Um, we can work with that. Fortunately, nobody's hurt or anything. That's good. All right, let's let's just continue on and uh, talk to this fine fellow. As you step inside, you are instructed by several thugs to see a small, scruffy-looking dwarf behind a desk. You step up to the desk as he smiles at you, displaying more gold teeth than ivory. 
Uh, I can pay 50 gold to sample some of the goods. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, say no more. Um, wink at the dwarf as if you know the real story, whatever that may be. Thank him for his offer, but ask to look about a bit before you decide. I like the wink and the nod here. He looks around to see that nobody else is watching too closely. He whispers, follow me upstairs. The treasure is ready to be split up. You are following... You follow him to a room upstairs. You are standing in the room with seven large men. The door behind you slams shut, and you can hear a jam being placed behind it. Perhaps it's strawberry jam. It's made with real strawberries. <laughs> it would seem you have walked into a trap. We're in quite a jam, it would seem. You push on the door and attempt a quick escape, but it's no use. You're stuck in this room and will have to fight for your lives. They have surprised us, indeed. They move first. Okay, so Effington is uh, getting beat up a little bit. That's his job. Effington is a crusader. He's uh, equipped with some pretty heavy-duty armor. So he's there to basically absorb damage. Once he gets to a certain level as a crusader, he'll be able to cast some limited spells. Um, in Realms, there's a cleric class, which is more of the kind of D&D &D cleric, the armor-wearing badass healer kind of guy. Uh, Effington is able to use blades, I guess, is the difference between... Uh, those two. But um, anyways, uh, we have Slugger, who's about to act. He's a Berserker, and he gets to attack twice per round. So he's very handy to have around. And he can hit pretty hard. Um, now we have Tail Mange. I would like to have Tail Mange trade places with Lethal over here. Or Flail Fist, excuse me. Lethal Flail Fist. Who gives a rat's ass? And uh, Tail Mange is actually a gnomish cardinal. He's like a priest, except he's a little bit squishier. So, uh, and he gets more spells to cast. I would like to have him cast Heal Small Wounds on my dear sweet friend, me. And it healed him completely. Good. Alright, now Variax is an enchanter. And he uh, is a basically a damage-dealing utility spellcaster. Um, I've given him, well, I've given him voiceover because he's a Let's Player. Boo! But also I gave him some other semi-useful spells. Limited Phase is a teleportation spell. Repulsive Bubble is a kind of an area of effect deal. Discover Magic will let us know if we have any magical items, but I'm going to be casting Lightning Strike. Because you've been Thunderstruck! Sorry. All right. Flail Fist! Flail away! And he attacks with his bare hands because he's a badass. Alright, um... Which of these should I kill? Ooh, nice. Good hit. Excellent. Oh, you idiot. Well, apparently Slugger has, uh, dropped his weapon. Um, he can equip this dagger. And he still hits pretty hard with it. Cool. All right. Um, Tail Mange. Just go ahead and uh, be on guard. Cardinals actually can hit pretty hard, despite the fact that they're mostly casters. F their physical attacks are decent. Um, Influx. Stabity. Now, Influx gets three attacks every two turns. So he'll go one turn where he attacks um, once, and then the next turn he'll attack twice. Kind of an interesting deal. I would like Variax to cast another lightning strike, and I promise I won't sing again. Good hit. Alright, and then Effington is fending off all three of these fellows, and he misses. Uh-oh, Slugger's looking a little bit uh, beat up. He might need to be healed. Crap. Okay. Uh, we need to actually get uh, Tail Mage next to him so he can cast his spell. Cool. And he can actually attack now. I might have him do that. But he can't move. So never mind. Alright. Finally, we get a kill. And there's another, alright. Honestly, um, having Slugger lose his weapon is probably a... Ah, he dropped his weapon too. 
um, is a huge setback because Slugger is going to be our chief damage dealer. He uh, he has a good weapon. He's just an all-around badass. He, and he can attack twice. Um, Tail Mage really can't do anything here. I might have him start working on attacking. And he gets to attack somehow. Interesting. Um, I am going to have Influx attack there. He didn't do very well, though. That wasn't spectacular. Alright. Well, we're gradually winning. Ooh. Looks like, uh... Tail Mage must have countered or something like that. That's interesting. Cool. Okay, um... Who needs healing? Slugger kind of does, but um, we don't have any, and we don't have enough spell points. Tail Mage doesn't to do any healing, so I'm gonna have one more shot with this lightning strike. Yay! I like how he literally says "hia" as he's punching somebody to death. All right, Evington, well done. Almost done here. And things are looking very promising right now. Does he get... It doesn't actually show his attacks per round here, but he apparently gets a shitload of them. And I'm gonna have Variax just guard. Ugh, I'm guarding. It's a lot of physical effort involved. Alright, dealt with. Um, that's the uh, battle axe that I dropped earlier, so that's actually why it's highlighted. It's not because it's magical or anything. Um, so we're gonna give that back to Slugger so that he can use it. Um, now we obviously have a lot of equipment here that we could pick up. Most of this is pretty useless, unfortunately. Um, the rations will take. It's not like in uh, the Trail at Crondor where it's uh, poison or anything like that. Unfortunately, too, I don't think I can actually cast a spell to see if these are magical. The reason why there's a little stop sign is it's telling me that um, whoever I have highlighted here can't equip these items. That's okay. I don't really intend on um, equipping them. I doubt that any of these are actually magical, so I'm just going to say done. But you better bet your sweet ass I'm gonna keep that money. Actually, we should pool all of our money and then share it equally. Basically communists. Actually, that's interesting. Apparently, Variax moves slower when he's carrying money. And so does, uh, Flail Fist. Hmm. Oh my god! Influx! Wonderful! Influx is leveled up. We'll have to take care of that. It's because, like I was saying, I, I've played this party a little bit just to make sure that the game worked and everything. So they actually have a little bit of experience already in the bag. Uh, experience, uh, you can see, is actually victory points. Uh, he has managed to uh, gain a level. So he automatically gets some increases to his stats. Um, he's going to have a little bit more stamina. As I recall, he had 8 of 8. Now he has 8 of 9, I think. But all around, just a better dude. You don't really get to adjust skill points or anything like that. The only time you'll ever make any kind of manual adjustments to a character when they level is if they're a caster. Because they'll get spell points and they get to pick a new spell to use. Fun fact. Or not. Um, you know what? One thing I should do is I should search. We'll search along the wall here, see if there's anything more to this brothel than meets the eye. And it's also a really good idea to save your game frequently. Save it over slot A. Excellent. Jump over the table here. Hmm. Oh, I remember this. Yes. Secret area to the southwest. You notice a large iron box 
under a loose floorboard, it would appear that you have found the profits from the brothel. Mm. <laughs> What's going on with that helmet there? How about Slugger, you hold on to that helmet. Um, and these scrolls are already ones I looted before because I've played through this part some days ago, so I don't fully remember everything. But it's in the interest of uh, disclosure, yes, I have played this a little bit already, so. <laughs> uh, yes, I would like to take it. Uh, I would like to give you... Well, no. I mean, you are a leprechaun and all, but apparently, uh, it's an all-or-nothing kind of thing. Okay. Alright, I don't think we have to search anymore. And the door. You'll notice, actually, that there's a timer here. A clock. And if we're walking around just normal, it just goes by one minute at a time. If we're searching, though, it takes a little bit more time, because we're being more thorough. Let's go down the stairs. This room is empty, save a strong smell of perfume. My kind of room. A big bed. Alright. Storeroom. Nothing of interest as far as you can see. You could rest in here without being found. That's a good idea. Let's go ahead and camp. And we can heal. Um, I can't remember how that works. Let's try it. Oh, Tail Mage will automatically cast a healing spell. Okay, but then we can just hold rest, which is got the very fitting icon of a naked dude sitting on a stump. And there's a fatigue thing here that um, I think affects your ability to hit and stuff. I would have to check the manual again. I'm gonna get everybody's spell points up. You do gradually get hit points back. Just been hanging out in this brothel for a day <laughs> in the storeroom. Uh, let's actually do some searching. You can just do a one-off search. It does take some time. Alright, well. Hmm. That would appear to be a dwarf without pants. A burly dwarven warrior is snoring loudly on the bunk. Several empty flagons of ale are scattered about the room. Do you wake him? Why would we do that? <laughs> Leave that poor man alone. Uh, we can always go back, I think. I like the encounter sound. Here, this room is empty. Um, Slugger is actually a little bit beat up. Oh. Well then. Let's, uh... Camp again and rest so that uh, Slugger's or Tail Mange's uh, points can come back up. You arrived in Bywater just in time as a winter storm has just covered the entire region in a thick blanket of snow. It's ice to be here. I promise that's. I'm not going to keep that up. Um, I'm actually going to save the game and talk to this guy. Save it over slot B. Let's see what happens. Let's wake him up. He wakes with a start as he shakes the cobwebs from his head and he begins to pat his belt. Suddenly he stands and begins to shout, Hey! Who stole me purse? <laughs> Without hesitation, he grabs a nearby axe and begins to swing. Me be tinkin', me be knowin' who has me purse. <laughs> me be tinkin' on getting it back just quick. Uh-oh. Gotta kill uh, the naked guy. Let's trade places with Barry Axe. Here we go. Naked Dwarf. Ooh! Oh no! Influx! You poor bastard. Um, hey, we forgot to give you your actual axe back. Ow. Done. Okay, so Influx is actually knocked out. Um, what we want to do here is bandage him. He's bleeding. Huh. Suddenly, Repep stops attacking. Oi, me be sorry, folks. I guess I lost me head. Twas the girl who me thinks took me coin. My god. It's just broken by dwarvish standards, even. Perhaps you will let me travel with you for a while. Tis a dangerous place to be traveling alone. Tink, I tag along with ye. Okay, so, um, you can have companions. And we are happy to have them. Um, see, there's the detect thing, yeah. Don't know why that didn't come up earlier. And 
we apparently got two inventory screens there. So now we've got this uh, dwarvish friend. Um, I wonder if we can heal Influx. We can. Okay, so I was worried that we would have to take him to the temple. Apparently we will not. That's fine. Serves me right for poking around in a brothel. Well, poking around in the wrong way. A gnome is surprised by your boldness. I will ask you to leave. I have friends in the town militia. It would be best if I did not have to give them your names. I haven't done anything wrong, strictly speaking, other than barging in on a person possibly mid-coitus. I'm gonna leave, though. <laughs> Alright. We could actually... We could barge in again. Let's go ahead and save the game. You know, honestly, this scenario is really meant to be save scummed a little bit. It's an introductory scenario. It's not really super serious. And like it said, it's it's not a um it's not meant to be played linearly. There's no real starting in. It's just to kind of introduce you to realms a little bit. I don't leave. Having called his bluff, oh, he gives you a stern look and stomps out of the room. You shall regret your hasty decision. <laughs> What kind of weirdos are we? We storm into a brothel room and refuse to leave. Well, I don't know. Maybe that kind of stuff happens all the time at brothels. I wouldn't know! You walk in as a rather embarrassed man finishes buttoning up his robe. He mills about gathering his things and leaves in a hurry. Did he leave anything behind other than his dignity? Would not appear so. Uh, since we have a rogue in our party, I think our searches are a little bit better. Maybe wrong about that. This room is empty. Uh-oh. We interrupt a woman. Doing what? <laughs> Should I even ask? Perhaps, uh... Delivering a monologue to a mirror. She's very embarrassed when uh, she sees that people see her talking to herself, I guess. I don't know. Get out! I shall have the town guard throw you in prison for this! You narrowly dodge a vase that is thrown at you. We can barely do it again, if you just want to hear that sound effect again. Uh-oh! Waiting for you at the bottom of the stairs is the small gnome you so rudely interrupted upstairs. Behind him is a large group of armed militia. That's them, Boron! And Krypton, and Neon, that group right there. Go, noble gases! Be inert! Um, wow, that is incredibly nerdy. Now, if you want your gold, you will have to earn it. Oh my god. I think we're in some trouble here. But, uh, we'll try to fight our way out of this. Let's kill this fucking gnome here. It really chaps my ass. Now, the AI does some really obnoxious stuff with kind of wandering around aimlessly in these situations. But I think we're gonna die pretty soon here. Oh, wow. That dwarf is pretty helpful. Um... Ow. <laughs> um... Alright. Tail mange. Physician, heal thyself. Oh, he's got, um... He doesn't have enough spell points. Uh -oh. We don't really have any potions or anything like that, unfortunately. Alright. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're gonna... Yeah, Tail Mage has been... Uh, Tail Mage is down. Ooh, good hit. But I think the numbers are just a bit much for us. The odds are against us. Killed the gnome. Oh, but Slugger is now incapacitated. Yeah, that's why you, um, that's why you, uh, save often. I would bandage these guys, but I think we're gonna die anyways. <laughs> so screw them. Um. Well, why don't we just do it for the sake of doing things correctly. We obviously didn't do things correctly at the outset here, but... Nice. Okay, we do need to bandage Tail Mage here. We might have Variax do that when he has a 
free moment. Not sure what happened there. Oh, Effington got conked out. Handy to have that dwarf around. I'm glad that I walked in on him. <laughs> um, there goes Influx. Alright. Yeah, we're not doing so good, you guys. We can actually get away with not bandaging here, but uh, why don't we just do it to expedite the end of this madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. There's actually only five of them left. This is actually... Ha! Huh. Moron! Gonna bandage Effington. <laughs> if we get through this, um, I will be very impressed, but... Let's cast a level... Power level 2! Lightning Strike! Oh, we just knocked him out. Fantastic. Now, I think even if you do get knocked out... Oh. If you do get knocked out, you still um, accrue experience, I think? Oh my god, we're still alive. Look at all this. Well, you know, that was possibly worthwhile. Look at all that victory pointage that we got. None of these items are magical. They're not particularly useful to us either. Um, Effington already has a decent weapon. Flail Fist I want to have using his bare hands. Fairy Axe can... Ooh, he can take the padded armor. Well, this is all kind of academic because... Um, I'm, I'm probably going to reload. As you clean your blades on the tunics of the fallen, you hear one of the employees of this establishment yell out the door to a group of nearby town militia. She is calling for help. You hear the clank of weapons and armor as they come running. Okay, we're fucked. <laughs> um, can I revert to a previous game? I don't remember what that does for sure. I'm going to just go ahead and have everybody die. One of the... Uh, tips for this particular uh, scenario is basically that Bywater is a law-abiding place, and people who abide by the law are treated well. If you run afoul of the law, you will probably suffer a great deal of agony. Just as we have! We have been killed, and the game has laughed at us for our efforts.